Well, good uh, morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Um, today we have our last episode on the 2021 election special of the Musings of the Knights of Rizal. We are happy to have one of the uh, um, Supreme Council members during the 20,000 uh, KOR elections that uh, led to the schism in the Knights of Rizal. This episode in the 2021 election special is going to um, concentrate on how the Knights of Rizal was able to overcome uh, issues of the election of the year 2000 that led to the division in the Knights of Rizal. And this is not in any way to um, throw mud to any personalities, but maybe pick up some lessons from the past that would be able to guide us to a better Knights of Rizal in the future. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Sir Balawan. We are very happy and uh, privileged to have uh, one of the uh, stalwart in the Knights of Rizal during the 2000, who was a member of the Supreme Council, a time when there was uh, that led to the schism. Uh, th since this is the 2021 election special, uh, I'd like to apologize to uh, Sir Paul uh, that we will see her in that. I know that he is a multifaceted individual with uh, numerous uh, uh, accolades and experiences, but uh, hopefully uh, we will have time in the future to maybe uh, center on uh, his other uh, achievements. But sir, uh, do you want us to uh, say uh, your salutations to our uh, KOR universe, I call it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sir Alwyn, for the opportunity to interview and to share thoughts about uh, our uh, elections this year. I, I would say from my from our time in, in the early 2000s, it's a very different uh, Knights of Rizal today. It's more vibrant, it's more active, it's more dynamic. And uh, I, I'd like to greet all our brother Knights all over the world who's been watching your show over YouTube and uh, over Facebook. And uh, I was quite surprised that there is a channel uh, where when I learned about it and I had to back, uh, I have to see all your previous episodes. It's very, very informative. I hope that this program, uh, you know, reels in more viewership and we continue this program for information and, and in, uh, for public information for, for the Knights of Rizal. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Um, so, sir, uh, let's start from uh, the past. Uh, in uh, 2001, uh, mm -hmm. as uh, our viewers know and as you know, uh, this was uh, at the very uh, start of the schism in the Knights of Rizal. And you were there as a newly dubbed uh, Knights of Rizal. Did, were you aware of anything of this goings on? Yes. Uh, the very first uh, National Assembly that I attended in, in, in Mimosa, in Clark, uh, I wasn't an item. I was just a mere observer, uh, just seeing how things are done. It is very evident that at the end of the time, that there was a imminent schism that's about to happen uh, from a the, from the usual or uh, expected administration to win that election that night there was an up, there was an upset uh, the, the the forecast was it is going to be the same administration but however that night it was quite different the results were different so emotions were running high uh, it was almost that there was almost no proclamation that happened, but I still remember Justice Torres, uh, uh, who was then chairman of the Council of Elders, was able to handle the, the affair very, very great. And you know, proclamation was well, proclamation still happened, and uh, that was the first term of uh, Sir Vic Palmon, and the deputy was Sir uh, Boyhe Pesau. And the chancellor was suggested. 
Now, what was the contention, sir? What was the issue? Uh, I would say the, the organization, after having been under the same administration for at least 15 years, uh, was already looking for a, a uh, new leadership. Uh, um, mind you, just, just to clear, clear it up to the newer knights of today, the constitution of the Order of the Knights of Rizal at the time is not the same constitution that's that's now. Huh? That's, it's very different. Uh, and then, the, the votes is one night, one vote. So unlike today, our voting system or our electoral system is quite representative. Uh, before it was one night, one vote, and uh, you could be re-elected to the Supreme Council at infinitum as much as as much as you like, so long as you get elected. So in in a way, you know, without being too dramatic, you can say mm. that it was like a a revolution within. Yes, it was a the, revolution within the KOR. The the KOR, yes, it was. It was already. It was bound to happen. Now, why, why, um, why, Sir Vic Palmon? He, you know, it's public knowledge that uh, he was involved in uh, a scandal in the uh, uh, police uh, retirement fund. Was yes. that ever an issue uh, that affected the Knights of Rizal that you know of? Uh, the issue would fit on 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 the, reti- the police retirement fund was way later. Uh, this is this is earlier. Clark happened first, so and the the, the issue with with Vic then was uh, was of a different context. But this one, the the first incident in Clark, uh, a lot of people are saying no because of of, of the police retirement fund, but no. Uh, the timelines are different. This happened first. Uh, truth be told, they could not accept Vic Palmon being Supreme Commander. Or I should I say that the, the changing of leadership was not really acceptable to some people. They were taken they were taken by surprise that they didn't win. They didn't have they never got the majority. So that no. was more of the contention. So, Sir Vic Falmon uh, was a surprise winner uh, mm-hmm. uh, as far as the administration was concerned back then. Mm-hmm. I think it was 2002 when he was asked to be relieved by yes, uh, Deputy Commander back then. Yes. Back then and yep. he did not accept that. Or he accepted it and then he reneged on it. Is that is that a fair statement, sir? After several months, there were some issues uh, involving legalities of, of, of the retirement fund, the police retirement fund. So I guess they were asking, because I wasn't in the meeting that was the meeting of the Council of Elders, I think, uh, with, with the backing members of the Supreme Council. They they asked if, if Vic Palmon, Sir Palmon, can. Uh, do a leave of absence and the uh, cervix said I think he can handle it without filing a leave of absence um, from then the, uh, there was a split in the Supreme Council um, there are some part there are some groups in the Supreme Council who wanted uh, to enforce a leave of serving and turn over the reins to the deputy Supreme commander for the remainder of the term. But, uh, however, majority of the Supreme Council then uh, decided that let Vic decide. If, if Vic says he can do it, then he, then he should do it. Anyway, uh, there will be the national uh, session uh, who will confirm uh, whether Vic is still fit to be Supreme Commander or, or not. So that is where the problem began in the, in the second portion because that is where uh, the Council of Elders was not uh, able to make a ruling immediately, and uh, there were 
issues or decisions left and right, resolutions are are being made by the Supreme Council, and there's another sub-resolution being filed by the minority. So, you know, and even the old issues in in in, in Clark uh, reemerged. So, the, the, there was a lot of things that were that were in play uh, at the time. So, I, I would not uh, I would not put it you know I, I would not uh, uh, put it past now. A lot of issues were muddled. Well, at this point, there were two supreme commanders. Uh, not it, not yet because we're we're nearing the national yes. assembly. So. Not, not, mm-hmm. Uh, this the, was the uh, one and the, in Pangasinan. One. Yes, one in Pang- uh, one in Gimba. Uh, the contested one is uh, is in Gimba, and the one is in, in Pasig. Yes, in Pasig, uh-huh. Pasig. Yeah. Uh, I, I was there in Pasig. I was already working as as a deputy supreme person. Um, in Pasig, because in, in Pasig, ano pa eh? Nag, nag Pasig pa muna eh. So Clark, and then Pasig, and then before the. Uh, post light issue, so that that became a problem because there were in fact two Palmenets, uh having or two electoral tribunals. There were two ballot boxes. One is for the Supreme Council and one is for the uh, for the other groups. They were running a separate election, so you yeah. will see that there are two canvassing areas. Uh, one that is of the Supreme Council and one is of another group. Uh, but no, oh, that that was uh, that was very chaotic. That that national assembly was was uh, was chaotic. Even the basic uh, stage, and just to put it in perspective, and and I I hope I really pray that this will never happen again in the history of the order. Uh, I know for a fact because I was running the, the administration of of of, uh, of the then Supreme Council. We were not running on Meralco power. We were running on generator because we had a tip off that for some reason Meralco will have a maintenance. Uh, uh, it was going to be a maintenance work that there won't be any power in the whole of result stage of the passing city stadium. So we had to immediately get. I, I, I had to call up somebody, put the generators. I will not want electricity coming from Meralco. I want my, my electricity coming from the generators. So whether or not there's going to be power disruption, I have power in, in, in the in the venue. Well, so that, that 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 is that is very tense. Now in this uh, passing uh, election, sir, um, this happened before the Pangasinan one. Yes, yes. Uh, now, sir Boy and Sir Vic are still. Are still under one ticket in the stand. Okay. Now, in in the Pasig uh, election, who prevailed at the as the Supreme Council uh, 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 Supre, uh, Supremo? Uh, the Supremo was the Servic Palmon uh, for 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 this election, and deputy was still Sir Boy and Pesal, and Chancellor was uh, Sir David. Uh, who prevailed, sir, in this election? Who won? Um, as far as elections are concerned, uh, Sir Vigyan, Sir, Sir Boy, and uh, there were other names uh, that, that were fielded, but uh, the ticket of Sir Vic, Sir Boy, and Sir Jess, the, the top three guys, uh, prevailed. Okay, so uh, who became, eventually at the end of the day, who became the Supreme Commander? Supreme Commander was still Sir Vic Palmon. Oh, he was re-elected. He was re-elected as okay. uh, uh, as Supreme Commander. Sir Boy was still deputy, and Sir Jess was uh, Chancellor. So this was after they asked him to have a leave of absence. This is uh, so he got then, uh, uh, just just to uh, ano muna? Clark and then Pasi and then the the leave of absence. I'm sorry, because we, we need to put passing in between the legal absence. So he because was uh, duly elected in passing. He was duly elected in passing. And then uh, a few months after that, he was asked to have a leave of absence. He was asked to have a leave of absence, yes. 
he was asked when he was asked to was asked to find a new of absence uh he only has about uh, five months in, in in the running uh before the gentleman's agreement uh, kicks in that sir boy will be the next supreme commander of course you have to call the national assembly for that yes uh, but now it was already agreed by the top two then of of of, of kr because you know how it is the money in the supreme council something you follow seniority yeah you know, there's the yeah that's exactly uh you the really expect the dep- deputy uh, you expect the deputy to take over because it's uh kind of like a training to yes. be the supremo but uh after he was asked for a leave of absence they had a national election in um uh, uh in uh Pangasinan yes there, there was one in Pangasinan there was one um, I, I could not remember where Sir Boy had, did his national assembly but as far as the uh Sir Palmon's national assembly it was done in Gimba, Gimba. Uh, and uh and uh, the the at the end of the day the, the Sir Vic and uh, I'm sorry uh, at the end of the day uh it was Sir uh, Chess David who won. Chess David who won. Who won the Gimba National Assembly because they were called the Rizal National Assembly then, or it was in, in Rizal, and then the Gimba uh, National Assembly during our time. So at, at the Gimba venue, it was Sir Chess David who, who won the elections, uh, and of course at the other side it was Sir Boyer Pesau. That is why, if you ask. Were there two supreme commanders at the given time? Yes, there were. Uh, now, our, uh, just for reference, what year was this happening? 2003? Uh, 2003, 2003. That's right. Uh, I, I could probably share this because it, 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 it happened. Because uh, I was there when, when the three of them were talking. I was actually coming them down and was like, sirs, we will bring all these two together. Can we find a, a middle ground? Yeah, and, and there was a heated discussion between Sir Boy and Sir Vic. Uh, I was very junior, so you know, just let the uh, uh, old guys, senior guys talk. And then Sir David was was kind of irritated, and he was like, "Kayo dalawa mataayus kayo ha, kasi ito was supremo, ito was deputy." I'd like to remind the both of you that as Chancellor, I am Supreme Commander pro tempore. So if the two of you did not make a decision, an amicable decision, I might probably just take over the realm of power, which is well within the constitution at the time. So we were kind of joking there on the side of para, sige, kaya din dalawa, pag hindi kayo nagkasundo. So, and they were, they were giants in the organization, both Sir sure. Palmon and Sir Ed Pesal, number one and number two. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, they have their own decisions to make. Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> now, uh, so, Sir um, uh, Gampisao became uh, the other, the other Supreme, Supreme Commander. Commander. Uh, hmm. Is that based on an, another election? That is based on another election on a separate National Assembly apart from Gimba. So, now I, I imagine that the uh, the other uh, the Gimba delegation or the D- Gimba people did not attend this uh, election of uh, Sir Gempisau. Yes, and vice versa. Uh, that that is what that happened. So where did uh, Sir Jess David uh, have his office as Supreme Commander? Right after election of the. Uh, of Gimba, of, of, the, of the session in Gimba that afternoon. We both, meet, well, I was part of the party. We went back to the national headquarters uh, in, in, in Port Area. So that was then uh, when, when we arrived, the office is essentially abandoned. Uh, the old staff work there. That was the time when they uh, transferred the uh, Staff transferred to Naipo building in Intramuros. That was, uh, of course, we, we took over the 
we took over the office. We uh, we had uh, placed in some staff, of course, for security. Uh, operations officer then was uh, uh, Sir Harry Tolosa, who won as uh, Supreme Trustee. Uh, he's also a former colonel in the Philippine National Police, so uh, was placed there as, as uh, operations officer. Now, I heard that uh, the uh, headquarters was padlocked. Is that true? There was rumors um, that it was padlocked so the Gempisau team couldn't go in. Is that correct? Um, when we arrived at that afternoon, because the Gimba National Assembly uh, happened first before the, the, the Gempisau uh, National Assembly, uh, when we arrived, we were the ones, uh, the gate was locked. And when we arrived, there was nothing more inside the uh, inside the office. The offices were locked. Mm-hmm. And then when we came in, uh, Servic authorized uh, uh, some people to get go get the locksmith, open the door because he, he's still he's still supreme commander, or at least a past supreme commander. And so just David was also there. So it was uh, there were videos, there were photos. While it was being done uh, for documentation purposes, uh, because we were expecting legal implications mm-hmm. uh, if uh, if some groups would allege that we were uh, forcibly opening it, and, and we have uh, uh, people from Manila, Manila's finest coming in just to see how you know how it was being supervised, and then when we opened the, the doors, there was nothing in there. So the fax machine is not there. Most of the paperwork are already out. You know, it was quite in this array. The office was quite in this array. So we had to you know, fix it up again and uh, have a functioning office at the headquarters. So it's going to, no. it was business and uh, business as usual after about uh, two days. Now, when. Uh the Gimpisau uh, election happened. How did uh, Sir David and your your the, that Supreme Council group mm-hmm. reacted? Did we they file a restraining them. order for them to not hold the um, uh, election? Uh, no, we didn't. Under the instruction of Sir David, we didn't file any TRO because as far as Sir David is concerned, his election is the, is the one that uh, uh, the prevails so but of course there were internal communications between uh, uh, towards the council of elders and uh, the the fun part is this sir alwin i mean despite all of these animosities that's happening around, and sir capos will be looking at this uh, me and sir Capo are very good friends and i know that he was going to be part of the supreme council of sir Empresau. We were still continuously talking over the phone, and uh, we were. You may consider that uh, you know back channel communications between brothers, despite yes. what what what's happening. So I, I was. Uh, you know, th- th- there's still unofficial back channel communications between Sir Henry Sal and Sir David. So it was really. I must say it was really politically charged. Na talaga that's. That's why it ended up where it ended. Yeah, yeah. And then there was a third party as well, right? Sir Esguera? Yes. How did there, that there, came there. about? When, when, when in this time frame did it came about? Uh, after the Empresao National Assembly, I just call it for, for brevity, the David National Assembly, the Empresao National Assembly, because uh, it was at the time of schism. So then there is this escape. I know Sir Esquerra will probably watch it. Sir, I love you. Uh, we're just talking about the past. Uh, there was the Esquerra National Assembly that happened also in Pizal. So, and of course, both Sir David and Sir Henry Sao were, were quite surprised. I could only imagine that Sir Henry Sao was also surprised about that action because uh, to begin with, there are only two contesting personalities after Sir Vic. Uh, obviously, we cannot contest Sir Vic Palmon's ascension into power or to, 
to, to, to the office. There's no question about that. He was legitimately, legitimately elected uh, as supreme commander. No questions asked there. But the next question would be uh, the National Assemblies after his term. So, and there were two. Uh, there were, and there, there were two. Yeah. There were two. And if if I could raise Sir Vic Palmon for like five minutes and ask him, who's the supreme commander after you, he would definitely say it's just a bit. Uh, you know, that 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 kind of, of a political stress was there. But uh, that there was a third party. Mm-hmm. And we never really, it never really prospered, if you ask me, because after the legal cases, uh, five left and right, the, the third Supreme Council didn't really participate in any of, of the actions. The, the legal actions and even the Council of Elders was mediating between the David group and the Hempesal group. The, the Esquerra group was not really considered uh, at the time uh, as, as, as a contender. Now, yes. Sir Esguera was uh, what was his position before he uh, uh, the Esguera uh, national uh, election? He was a past uh, supreme trustee under Sir Kemba. Okay, that, so he uh, was a regular he member. Was, uh, he was a regular member. I see. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Um, now, what uh, what? happened that uh, when everything cooled down what what was uh, a singular event that made uh, to you broke uh, broke all this uh, schism well and uh, that, that they is, yeah. looked into unifying again yes um, you know after what is all is said and done uh, when, when emotions run high you feel like you own you know, take on the world but after like two years in the Supreme Council, you start to feel worried and weary of what's happening. Uh, how could there be a functional order of the Knights of Musa when there are essentially two Supreme Councils battling for a seat in the National Historical Institute, uh, battling for recognition from, from government? It was just not us, uh, the David cabinet, that's feeling the pain. I'm, I'm sure the Hempesal cabinet also felt that pain when I was was talking to Sir Kako. I, I don't know where we're going, but uh, this is not this is not good. So I think, yeah, I'm also praying for a reunification. And uh, the good part is that uh, even if Sir David and Sir Hempesal were at odds with each other, some members of their Supreme Council are working towards unification and i could say that sir, sir eugenio la victoria or then sir eugenio la victoria is actually working towards unifying uh the knights of Pisa. uh i i'm not privy to it but i was told that the uh, serenato puno was uh, also asked to, to meet me uh through sir Justo torres and sir Justo torres was was tirelessly working towards uh, reunifying the order. Um, truth be told, I, I, I think there was about 15 million pesos that was spent uh, uh, on, 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 elect, on election-related cases uh, on both on both camps. So imagine the budget that was spent was it was. How should I say this? Uh, it was like civil war happening. So the the stress and the resources of the order was really uh, was really bad. Yes. So I guess cooler heads prevail. Uh, we all wanted to have five. You know, uh, you know let us go back to where we were before as brothers, not as adversaries. Uh, it's also bad uh, example for our Kabataan Pangarap Nisan. That's right. You because, had two of them. Uh, we, we had two national uh, Rizal Leadership Institute. Uh, I was the executive director of the David uh, uh, Enrili. And there was another Enrili 
happening on the other end of the of, of teacher camp. So it was like it was awkward. Uh, yes. But but you, you press on. There's a there's a job that you have to do. Uh, that that has been my mantra. Yes. Uh, some people ask me uh, politically, were were you aligned to this and were you aligned to that? My answer is this. Sir, Sir Jen and I have been good friends when I was still a K- KR and KOR. Uh, the, the people that, that he also worked with, Sir Manny Cabusa, I've worked with him, you know, uh, Sir Beres Guerra, I, 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 these people I admire. Uh, yeah. It's just so that uh, at this particular time and event, you know, you make, uh, you make that decision, you make that call. Stand now, by what you believe. So as far as you are uh, aware, the, the the well the revolution was from within, yes. but also the move for unification was also from within. From within, yes. Okay. Uh, there was a call for sobriety. I think after about after about a year and a half more than uh, there were already groups of knights of Rizal who already tired of. of uh, of, of uh, the left and right meetings of, of the Supreme Councils. So it was inevitable for a reunification to happen. And we were we were very lucky to have Sir Hilario Davide uh, come in and, and, and work with the reunification. So Sir Joey Lina was also a part of the unification? And yes. he became a supreme commander just to yes. change the constitution. Yes. And uh, now, go ahead, go ahead, sir. Now, sir, do you think that this con- the constitution that Sir uh, uh, Joey Lina uh, spearheaded did that uh, was that amicable to everybody, and did that answer the possible pro- uh, problems that uh, all this schism started? Uh, uh, from the start, um, how, that, that's a quite complicated question, Sir Ali. Um, in, in terms of the schism, uh, on the context of the schism that happened in, in the context of 2000, from about 2000, that constitution and bylaws did answer uh, most of. of of the questions that were lingering at the time. And we are very, very grateful for, for, for these brothers who have done so. And you know, but as as we move forward, my my, my this is just my personal thoughts. Um, we are still a work in progress in terms of the constitution. Uh, because my how I viewed it when I was an observer to become a knight. The, the problem uh, booted because there was no open, there was no rotating door policy. We have leadership that's been in the order for quite a time that's not being rotated. Meaning if you're, if you're elected to a particular position, you stay there for a very, very long time. And as uh, anyone that's worked with corporate management, you know that that is not uh, healthy, uh, especially when it's a voluntary organization, because this is not your career. This is but a voluntary organization. Normally, you have term limits, uh, two to three years, you know. And two years, essentially, is, is a long, uh, is a very short time for a very good leader. Uh, but two years is a very long time for a very bad leader. So that, that, that's that's my point of view when it comes to term limits. Sometimes uh, I see people, I don't want to mention names anymore, uh, they're, they're so proud that, oh, I have been chapter commander for like 25 years of this chapter. I have served my chapter for 25 years as mm-hmm. commander. Um, as an organizational guy who <laughs> studied management, 25 years as chapter commander on a volunteer organization, my question would be, where, where is the leadership development? Because you, were, you seem to be the only one stepping up the plate. 
Now, sir, um, thank you for looking back. I know it uh, could be difficult to look back and really, uh, you know, as uh, the events uh, are now, the, the wounds have healed. But still, yes. it's not fun to prick on the scar. Yes, yes. Uh, but, so I thank you for your candidness. Uh, however, in this, uh, let's go to the present now. Uh, are you satisfied with the uh, uh, way the, uh, talking about elections, the um, uh, tribunal has handled this particular election? 